Hello friends, today we shall discuss how to determine load transfer efficiency of joints in rigid pavements using falling weight deflectometer. In a concrete pavement, load transfer is important to pavement longevity. Most performance problems with concrete pavements are a result of poorly performing joints and distress such as faulting, pumping, corner breaks occur in part from joints with poor load transfer efficiency. All of these problems worsen when joints deflect greatly under load. And there are two types of joints in a cement concrete pavement. One is transverse joint and double bars are provided in these transverse joints and they provide a mechanical connection between slabs without restricting horizontal joint movement. They also keep slabs in horizontal and vertical alignment when loaded by heavy vehicles dowel bars lower joint deflection and stress in the concrete slab and reduce the potential for joint problems by increasing load transfer efficiency another is longitudinal joints and here steel bars are provided these are called tie bars and they are used primarily to prevent lanes from separating also, by holding slabs tightly together, they promote aggregate interlocking and consequently load transfer. So, in a concrete pavement, there are two types of joints. One is transverse joint, another is longitudinal joint. Double bars are provided here in the transverse joint and tie bars are provided along the longitudinal joint. And purpose of these double bars is to transfer the load from one slab to another slab when the wheel jumps over the cap. Transfers as well as longitudinal joints deteriorate with traffic due to continuous loading. The proper load transfer at joints has to be maintained for a good functioning of payments. This load transfer efficiency depends upon several factors including temperature and temperature affects the joint spacing or joint opening and also on joint spacing, number and magnitude of load applications and foundation support. For a new pavement, the joint efficiency is nearly 100% since the deflections on either side of joint under a wheel load are almost equal and the ratio decreases as the joints deteriorate under repeated loading. When the wheel reaches the transverse joints and is about to cross the joint spacing, the entire load comes on the edge of the slab. If there is no connection between two consecutive slabs, the deflection will be like this, that the entire load is taken by the preceding slab and the forward slab does not deflect at all. And that is called a 0% load transfer efficiency when they, you know, there is no transfer of load from one slab to another. And this is the case when no double bars are provided. When doubles are provided and they are 100% effective, then the wheel load is transferred to the next slab and both slabs will deflect as a single unit and this is what we call 100% load transfer efficiency and this is the case of a new pavement. And this ratio of deflection on either side decreases as the joint deteriorates under repeated load. This falling weight deflectometer is a device that is used to apply a transient load on the pavement and measure deflection in the pavement at different points away from the load. Deflections are measured through geophones. Now these geophones are placed at different distances from the center of the load and deflection D0, D1, D2 to D6 are recorded automatically by the data acquisition system and these distances can be 300, 450, 600, 900, 1200, 1500 millimeter or can be different distances also. So basic principle of payment evaluation using FWD that you have a mass of weight which is dropped from a predetermined height onto the spring placed on top of a loading plate and then corresponding peak load and peak deflections at different distances are measured and recorded. 
so that you can draw this peak deflection bowl. So it has a loading unit that is the, that has the ability to simulate actual loading condition. Deflection unit, a series of sensors to capture deflection data at different radial distances so that you can capture this deflection bowl and a controlling unit to record all these information. Different load magnitude can be applied by varying the falling mass and falling height. The variation in the mass can be from 50 to 350 kg and this height can be changed by the user from 100 mm to 600 mm. There is a plate here, circular plate of 300 mm diameter and below this plate you have a rubber rubber pad so to distribute this transient load uniformly over the plate and the target peak load on concrete pavement is 40 to 60 kilo newton or maybe even higher but the criteria is that you should have a reasonable deflection of around 0.15 millimeter in the last geofall. Six to nine sensors are used to adequately capture this deflection bowl and the distance of these sensors from the center of the load varies with FWD. In some cases, it is 20, 30, 45, 60, 90, 120 centimeter, whereas it can be 30, 60, 90, 120, 150 or 180 centimeter also when you are using seven sensors. If you are using six sensors, then these distances can be like this. In the case of rigid pavement, we use only three sensors plus one sensor below the load. So sensor at zero position at 300 millimeter, 600 millimeter and 900 millimeter are sufficient in case of concrete pavement. This is how FWD test is conducted. Although this is a flexible pavement, but procedure remains same. Here is a loading plate and below that there is a rubber pad. These are the geophones which will record the deflection in the pavement. And this is the spring, a load here. It is raised up to certain height and then dropped. So we raise the load here and then it is dropped. The first reading is considered to be a seating load and deflections for the first reading are not recorded. And then you apply this load at least three times and then raise this whole assembly and take this to the next point from this side. Now these are the geophones and here is the loading plate. This is the load which is now raised through this magnet and then it is released from a height. And if you are testing a transverse joint, keep the plate at the edge of the slab. And if you are testing load transfer efficiency of tie bars, then keep it along the longitudinal joint on the shoulder lane. Now these are the readings which you get. This is the load and deflections in D0 to D8 and then latitude, longitude, temperature of the pavement, everything you get in the DAS system that is data acquisition system. When the test is done to check the load transfer efficiency, the loading plate should be placed close to a longitudinal joint near the shoulder of a four lane highway in the case of tight shoulder here like this and sensors are placed on either side of the joint one sensor on this slab another sensor on the shoulder when testing efficiency of double bars then this plate should be placed at the edge of the slab and the sensor should be placed on both the slabs one on the loaded slab, another on the unloaded slab. So one slab is loaded and the next slab is unloaded and we record the deflection in both the slabs. And this is the slab which is loaded and the slab which is not loaded. 
So D1 is the deflection in the loaded slab and D2 is the deflection in the unloaded slab. Then load transfer efficiency of the joint can be estimated using this equation D2 upon D1. For a new payment, D1 should be equal to D2. That means 100% load transfer efficiency. Now D2 is the deflection on the unloaded side of the slab. And this D2 becomes less and less as the joint deteriorates. If this D2 upon D1 is less than 0.5, and transverse joints are in critical conditions. If D2 upon D1 is less than 0.4, then longitudinal joints is in critical condition. And if these conditions are reached, then retrofitting of dowel bars and tie bars are recommended as prescribed in IRC SP83. If the deflection sensors are 300 mm apart during FWD test, like this, that this is the slab which is loaded, this is the double bar, and there is a center of the loaded plate, so 150 mm here and 150 mm here. The first sensor is here, and second sensor is on the slab, which is unloaded. So this is 300 mm. Then in that case, load transfer efficiency is estimated using this equation. A factor here, a slab bending correction factor is applied and the value of this lies between 1.05 and 1.15. A typical value of 1.05 is suggested in IRC 117. Let me take one example just to illustrate how do we find the load transfer efficiency. Let us say we are testing transverse joints means the efficiency of double bars and diameter of loading plate is 300 millimeter as usual. Sensors measuring deflections of loaded and unloaded slab across the joint were 200 millimeter apart means no correction factor is required. The payment layers consisted of 150 millimeter thick DLC over compacted subgrade and 300 millimeter thick PQC of M40 grade. And when you take the observations using FWD, you get this kind of data. Drop weight 56.3 kN or 5630 kg and this is a deflection in loaded slab and deflection in unloaded slab. So you take three observations, take average of these three observations, this is the average load and this is the average deflection in the loaded slab average deflection unloaded slab and this ratio will give you 97.43 percent load transfer efficiency. Similarly, you can change the drop weight to 70 kN, 80 kN or 100 kN and determine the load transfer efficiency. And as I told you, if it is less than 0.5 or 0.4, that means your joints need immediate attention. So that is how you determine the load transfer efficiency using FWD. And if this LTE is less than 0.5, transverse joints are in critical condition. If it is less than 0.4, then your long term joints are also in critical condition. That means tie bar has also lost the transfer efficiency. And if these conditions are reached, retrofitting of double bar and tie bars are recommended as given in IRC SP83. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions, you can write in the comment box.